Now, let's talk to Danny Dumaris. Danny, you're on the air. Yes, good morning, Bill. Hi, Danny. How are you doing? Oh, very well, thank you. And uh, great to uh, have you back uh, on the, on the, uh, on the show. Well, thank you very much, Danny. I really appreciate it when you call in, too. You're not everybody's cup of tea, but I think you're great the way you stir up the, uh, well, I was going to, well, I can't say that. This is a family show, but you, <laughs> you do get things going. Let me put it that way. Well, uh, as you know, Bill, 50 plus one would be a wonderful world. So, uh, <laughs> if I don't happen to please everybody, that's not necessarily going to keep me up all night. Yeah, I, I, I agree 100%. You're a man after my own heart in that regard, Danny. Go right ahead, sir. Well, you know, I've been making some comments, uh, certainly while you were away, and, uh, and I noticed it got the attention of, of a column there on the weekend about Nalcor. Yeah. And, uh, basically what I have been saying, and, uh, certainly want to reiterate today, is that, uh, you know, we uh, can't afford to be gambling with the taxpayers' money as we as we have, as, particularly in the equity stakes on the offshore oil. I mean, this is where a lot of our cash is now going. Uh, for example, in Ebron, yeah. when we signed on to Ebron, we uh, got 4.9 uh, percent equity. Absolutely inconsequential when it comes to the control and direction of the project. And at the time, you know, we were looking at an investment around $250 million. Uh, but uh, that was uh, when they were estimating the cost to be around $5 billion. And, of course, uh, on uh, New Year's Eve of the past year, the uh, partners sanctioned and the cost is now $14 billion and counting. So how much does that make our small little... Uh pick a own, uh, equity investment. How much are we on the hook for now? Well, by coincidence, it's around $810 million. And, uh, and of course, over the next uh, uh, two or three years, as this project is being built, we have to take that cash out of general revenue and put it into this project. But, Danny, before you move on from that, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't most people say, yes, that may be all be so, but it's a good investment. There's going to be great returns as shareholders. There's going to be great returns on that investment in the long haul for our children and grandchildren. Would you disagree with that? Absolutely disagree with it, Bill, because there is absolutely no guarantee on what our rate of return is, specifically because we are gambling with the price of oil. Yeah. I mean, we we can very well. I'll give you this scenario. Now, however realistic some people may think, but, I mean, uh, give you this scenario. We can go and build this project. And, uh, and oil remain at around $100 a barrel, uh, for the next five or six years, which is the current predictions. Yeah. And, uh, we would have the $850 million gone, and we could see the price of oil like it did in 2008 go down to $45. And you know what will happen? The big Exxon Mobil of the world will go out and cap that well and move it the, the rigs to Venezuela or some other part of the world where they can make money, and they'll they'll come back whenever they can they make the kind of return that they they are seeking. There's you know that's the kind of thing that can happen to us. In the meantime, eight hundred million dollars of our uh, taxpayers' money is down the drain at least for the uh, uh, at least for the present, if not forever. Yes, and the bottom line is that the uh, the way it's been set up, we have given up our royalties. I mean, that's why no other country in the in the Western world, in my opinion, no other state in the United States, no other province in Canada, has ever taken taxpayers' money and gambled it in the commodity like like offshore oil. What was the rationale of the time for Danny Williams doing that? Do you recall? Well, the rationale is this, uh, you know, as he under uh, as he certainly pronounced it. We got a piece of the pie. You know, it was like a, you know a bit of bravado. We were in on the action. You know, we're 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 taking our we're taking our piece and and showing them that we can we can have some of this too. And yeah, I remember we were eye by eyeball to eyeball, and the other guy blinked. Remember? Oh yeah, I mean it went for four years and there was no development. And but as I said, in order to get this 4.9 percent, he gave up the royalties until this project has that total payout, and that means that six or seven hundred million dollars a barrel, six or seven hundred million dollars of royalties are going to be given up on the short term. So that's what I mean. Like we can reach the payout. Our eight hundred and some odd million dollars is gone. Yeah. Then we got to wait uh, because we're only going to be restricted to one percent as opposed to a maximum of seven point five percent on the 
on the royalties. Mm. And, uh, you know, we're going to be out then uh, basically $1.4 billion because we should have received those royalties. And that's what everybody else in government, elsewhere in Canada and the United States, have said. Governments need money to keep people on the job. So at the same time now as we're embarking to throw hundreds and hundreds of people through the street because we haven't got cash to pay the, the current account, mm. we are gambling, gambling totally unnecessarily with our own taxpayers' money. Okay, and on a small matter, uh, when it comes to Nalcor, Crown Corporation, probably with a culture of uh, privilege developing somewhat, uh, fairly sizable incomes and so on. I mentioned that I saw a middle management guy traveling while I was walking back to steerage, a uh, middle management guy traveling in a business class. Do you happen to know from your own experience in the past what the policy is on that? No, I don't know uh, what's happening uh, with that. I uh, I certainly uh, have not run into anybody on the plane in that category, but I'm not surprised. I certainly understand where you're coming from. I mean, here we have now, Cor. Listen, this would not happen other than in a banana republic. We have a crown corporation that has been set up with no access to the freedom of information. Mm -hmm. There's no public tender uh, act uh, provided for in the discard of billions of dollars of taxpayers' money, and there's no uh, auditor general allowed in on a, a value for audit money. Hey, wait, now, just on that, uh, what, what is the, uh, we, we're running out of time now, I have to go to a break, but the auditor general, does he have, or he or she have, any rights when it comes to going in and seeing the books of Nalcor, or are they excluded completely? The, now, the Auditor General has to be invited in, is my understanding, and even if he's invited in, he can only uh, do a counting of the beans. He's not allowed to give a value for uh, for money, you know. And I, yeah, and which is, is a major. That is a major thing. And, and by the way, Bill, this is extremely uh, uh, hypocritical because you have Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro, when I was on the board, yeah. and still is today, it is governed by the Public Tender Act. Yeah. So you can go in, as I saw there on the weekend, and on February the 8th, for example, you could see where the, the now Newfoundland Hydro paid $38,500 for coffee and filters in uh, Church of Falls. Mm -hmm. You can see that, people, and so forth. But when it comes to the billions of dollars, the subsidiary is showing all of these accounts, which is what it should do. But when it comes to the billions of dollars, uh, you know, we can't see any. And, for example, yeah. I have been told that the road yeah. that was built into the south side of, of Muskrat Falls, that the estimate that Nalcor had was $17 million. Mm -hmm. But the contractor has been paid nearly $40 million. And, and nobody and, and nobody has any uh, inkling as to why that happened. Listen, I, Danny, I've got to say goodbye. We're long past our break time. You're raising some good issues. Don't be a stranger. Raise these points. Uh, as I said, uh, a lot of people uh, don't like to hear your points, but I take that as uh, uh, the fact that you're hitting home and maybe hitting some sensitive spots. And thank you very much for your comments today. Thank you for your time, Bill. We will certainly keep it up. Oh. And uh, for those who are intimidated by it, well, get into the fray and argue on the basis of merit, not personality. Absolutely. Thanks, Danny. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.